Well, the fast net is home ground, isn't it? This is the uh, the one the Brits can all go for. It's our UK event. Here it is in our backyard. So uh, to us, it's the big one. It's all to play for, and uh, it's the one that we take most seriously. Fastnet race is the classic offshore race. It was the one that started them all, started in 1925. It's the one everybody wants to do. My uh, Fastnet campaign uh, well, really started when I uh, ordered the boats uh, because I knew at that stage that I would want to do Fastnet. Uh, it's an iconic race, um, one that we really enjoy doing. We've been racing the 40 this year in preparation for the Fastnet. That's been one of our main goals through the season and it's great to do a UK-based race and sail with some mates. Go for the fast net, well, be around the rock in first place and continue that place all the way to Plymouth. But I think uh, we're going to have some stiff competition. We've got another Mod 70 coming up. The multi L fleet's going to be uh, certainly led out, I think, towards the west by some of the bigger trimarans. Well, the fast net race is a 600 mile race. In that time, you really don't want to be out of communication. You want to know where the rest of the fleet are. You want to be able to download the weather whenever you can. This time, if anything happens, we are in constant communication wherever we are and I would recommend anybody doing a long race like this to have some form of, of mobile communication that will work at a distance. One needs to think of satellite communications and ships at sea as the umbilical cord connecting the vessel for crew safety, for crew welfare, essentially for any means of communication. Well it's really important for us safety wise to have good coverage throughout the race because we've got two injured guys on board. If something went wrong with the boat or something went wrong with one of the crew, we could use that to talk to an expert. So if, say, uh, we, had a prop we needed to charge the batteries, the engine wouldn't start, we could talk to an engine expert and actually video the problem. He, we, he could be telling us exactly what to do. And for me personally, as a sailor, uh, communication is very important because what's the point to sail? Uh, you know, I've done enough sailing now, so now I need to share. We've got loads of people, you know, fans, fam family, friends who are keeping up with what we're doing and they love being able to see photos and videos and get updates about what we've been up to offshore. Mostly in the past they've seen lots of boats going off at the start and a few boats coming in at Plymouth but they don't really know what goes on offshore at night in the boat when it's uncomfortable, how people actually live on a boat at sea for four days and I think that this will actually show people what it's really about. Satellite communications enables any sort of application you can think of. Weather is one of the most powerful. Downloading the weather, having internet available, looking at strategy, it plays a huge part in the sailing. So we can't, you know, as good as we are looking at clouds, it's really nice to know that 10 day forecast and keep checking it every download to make sure our boat's in the right place and hopefully get the strategy right and beat our competitors. It is definitely very, very important for, for technical, it's performance. And for performance, on a, on a race like the Fastnet, we need to access um, uh, weather uh, files. And uh, that's, if we don't have weather files, uh, it's, a, it's a big handicap. And if you know where your competitors are, you can keep the weather updated, you're going to have a huge advantage. For this race, the introduction of the Netcaster app is transformational. For the first time, everyone can be their own reporter, and for the first time, everyone can share their own experience in a networked world. Well, I think it's really exciting this year we've got use of this Netcaster app, and it allows us to make this media communication that's so important, and to make it so easy that it's still available just on our phones that we're so used to communicating on normally. We can link to TVs, we can link to newsrooms, and now everybody can experience what I'm going to go through on this machine in the Fastnet race. We'll get photographs and video of boats going round the, uh, the Fastnet Rock after they start the race and when they, they arrive in Plymouth. And Jason, sort of giving people a, a feel for what it's like on the boat over this four or five day race. The human story that comes off of the yachts is one of the most compelling in the world. And when it's windy, some of the pressured situations you can get into can be brought alive into the living rooms of millions. The sport of sailing 15 years ago was totally different to what we see, what we see today and that's really been facilitated really by, the, by modern communications and getting the story off the boat and into the living room. MRSAT's fleet broadband service is its most successful launch of any product it's ever had. It is the 
most reliable service that MOSAT provides and is its broadband service to the ships at sea yachts. It provides several different types of terminals, shapes of terminals and sizes of terminals enabling them to go on a wide range of vessels. There are 350 yachts uh, competing uh, in all sizes so it's going to be a very, uh, uh, a very tough race uh, in that respect but it, it is an iconic race. Um, the first time we did it many years ago it was, it was one of those mountains to climb so you have to do it.